Welcome to this program in the Our Finger Lakes History Series. I am Seneca County historian Walter Gable. This program will focus on the three big land purchases in the Finger Lakes region. If you look at this map, you will see the solid green line that denotes the preemption line. The broken red lines point out the three large land purchases in the Finger Lakes region talked about in this program. One to the west of the preemption line is shown as the Phelps and Gorham purchase area. To the east of the preemption line and in the lower part of the map are shown the two other areas, the Boston 10 Townships and the Watkins and Flint Purchase. The military tract that is shown on this map is discussed in another program in the Our Finger Lakes History series. The first big land purchase I will deal with is what became known as the Phelps and Gorham Purchase, shown to the left of the colored lines on this map. In another program in the Our Finger Lakes History series, I dealt in detail with the preemption line, but I need to give some brief historical information about it for you to understand how this Phelps and Gorham purchase came about. Prior to the Treaty of Hartford in 1786, the states of New York and Massachusetts both claimed lands west of Seneca Lake. But in that treaty, their differences were resolved by giving Massachusetts the right to the lands in western New York, west of a line to be surveyed, the line become, to become known as the preemption line. That survey line, or preemption line, was because Massachusetts was given preemptive or first chance rights to negotiate with the Iroquois Indians in these lands. As the map shows, these lands west of the preemption line were the lands of the Seneca Iroquois. The Commonwealth or state of Massachusetts would have to negotiate with the Senecas to acquire full rights to these lands, or Massachusetts could sell its preemptive rights to someone else. In 1788, the Commonwealth of Massachusetts sold its land and preemptive rights to all western New York lands west of this preemption line. This sale is known as the Phelps and Gorham Purchase because the purchasers of these rights were a syndicate or group formed by Oliver Phelps and Nathaniel Gorham. The land area was approximately six million acres. The rights were purchased for one million dollars to be paid in three annual installments plus five hundred thousand dollars for the preemptive rights to negotiate with the Iroquois Indians. The payments were to be made in Massachusetts paper currency which at that time was greatly depreciated in it from its face value. Phelps and Gorham were confident that it would be easy for them to make their second and third annual payments to Massachusetts in that they would be selling lands to individual settlers or to large land speculators getting revenue and the payments would be easy because the Massachusetts paper currency would likely continue to depreciate even more. You will note that this agreement included the areas from Lake Ontario in the north to the New York-Pennsylvania border in the south and extended all the way west to Lake Erie and the Niagara River. Phelps and Gorham then negotiated with the Seneca Indians and other Iroquois tribes to obtain clear title for their entire parcel. They acquired title, however, only to a little over two million acres east of the Genesee River in a smaller tract just south of Lake Ontario. That smaller tract of about 185,000 acres was known as the Millyard Tract 
and was about 12 miles wide and 24 miles long. Contrary to their vision, Phelps and Gorham got caught up in financial difficulties. These difficulties arose for two reasons. One reason was that the land sales were not as great as expected, so their revenues were not what they anticipated. A second reason was that the monetary value of the Massachusetts currency had risen. Without going into too much detail, with the United States government getting firmly established under the new Constitution, Feelings were strong that U.S. Secretary of the Treasury Alexander Hamilton was going to propose that the federal government take on all debts of the states. State bonds and state paper currency would, were now becoming worth a great deal more. Phelps and Gorham would now have much more difficulty in making their second annual payment to the Commonwealth of Massachusetts. By early 1791, monetary values rose, and in combination with the poor sales revenue from land sales, the syndicate was unable to make its second of the three payments for the lands west of the Genesee River forcing Phelps and Gorham to for default on exercising the remainder of the purchase agreement. They were also forced to sell at a discount much of the land that they had already titled to but had not yet resold. That land was purchased by Robert Morris of Philadelphia, who had gained fame as the financier of the U.S. American Revolution. This map shows how the lands of the more western parts of New York were eventually sold in other land agreements which I won't go into detail here because our focus in this program is on the Finger Lakes region. So as a result of the financial difficulties of the Phelps and Gorham Syndicate, the western part of the Finger Lakes region became owned by Robert Morris. In early 1790, Robert Morris agreed to sell 12 million acres to the Pulteney Associates based in London, England. Pulteney Associates was led by Sir William Pulteney and consisted of other Englishmen. The sale price was for more than double the price that Morris had paid to acquire the lands from the Phelps and Gorham Syndicate. At that time, non-U.S. citizens could not legally hold title to land in the United States. So the Pulteney Associates sent Charles Williamson of Scotland to the United States. Charles Williamson became a naturalized U.S. citizen on January 9, 1792 in order to permit him to hold the land in trust for the Pulteney Associates. Charles Williamson settled on the tract in February 1792. On April 11, 1792, Robert Morris conveyed the deed to Williamson and was paid $333,333. $333. Morris made a profit of over $160,000 on this transaction. This Pulteney purchase was then known as the, was also known as the Genesee Tract. After Sir William Pulteney's death in 1805, it was known as the Pulteney Estate. Also shown on this map is the very western part of New York is the Holland Land Purchase of 1792 that Robert Morris sold. To. Also shown on the map in between the Holland Purchase and the Pulteney Purchase is the Morris Reserve. Robert Morris had kept these 500,000 acres when he sold lands to the east to the Pulteney Associates and lands to the west to the Holland Land Company, but I won't go into more detail about them. Now to come back to the preemption line for a minute, 
When Robert Morris was buying lands from Phelps and Gorham, Morris was suspicious that the eastern boundary line, that preemption line, had not been correctly surveyed. So a new survey was done. This map shows in red the original preemption line, which became known as the first survey line, and in green the second survey line completed in 1792. Without going into any more detail, I'll just mention the surveyors who resurveyed this preemption line also did a resurvey of the western boundary of the lands that Morris purchased. One last visual regarding the lands west of the preemption line. In this map, you see that Ontario County was established in 1789 and consisted all of New York State west of the preemption line. What was Ontario County today at the time of this map consisted of 14 counties today. So far in this program, we have been focused on the lands that the Commonwealth of Massachusetts had preemptive rights to west of the preemption line. The Treaty of Hartford of 1786 that had given the Commonwealth of Massachusetts rights to lands west of this preemption line resulted in the Phelps and Gorham purchase, as I've already mentioned. But that same treaty also gave Massachusetts control over what became known as the Boston Ten Townships. This other area, the Boston Ten Townships, I have highlighted its location on the map with a red arrow. The Boston Ten Townships consist of 230,400 acres in present-day Tioga and Broome counties. As shown on this 1796 map, the location of the Boston Ten Townships that were purchased from the Commonwealth of Massachusetts. Note also the location of these Boston Ten Townships relative to Cayuga and Seneca Lakes. The Boston Purchase Company consisted initially of Samuel Brown and his 11 partners but the company was enlarged to a total of 60 partners. One of the original 11 partners was Colonel Avid Pixley, who came to the area, learned the Oneida Indian language so as to make it easier for the company to obtain full rights to these lands in their discussions with the Oneida Indians. Most of the Boston Purchase Company investors all actually settled in the area, and the rest of the lands were sold to other would-be settlers. So far I've dealt with two big land purchases in which the Commonwealth of Massachusetts was the seller. Now I want to focus on a big land sale by the state of New York. If you look near the bottom of this map, you will see the location of this Watkins and Flint purchase. New York State, like Massachusetts, was in serious financial difficulties after the Revolutionary War and was looking to make land sales as a major source of revenue. The name of the Watkins and Flint purchase come from the two key people in a syndicate that bought these approximately 300,000 acres from the state of New York in 1794. John W. Watkins was a New York City lawyer and property speculator. Royal W. Flint was a New York City speculator in the financial markets. These two men saw an opportunity to buy these lands from the state of New York quite cheaply, and then sell off chunks as smaller lots to would-be white settlers. And that is exactly what they proceeded to do once they acquired ownership of what has become known as the Watkins and Flint Purchase. There were lots of interested would-be white settlers who had heard the accounts of the soldiers of the Sullivan Expedition, 
These soldiers had told of how this area had lots of trees which could be cut and sold for lumber and that the lands themselves would be fine agricultural lands. The members of the syndicate that bought these lands made handsome profits from their investment. You will note on the map that there was another area labeled as the military tract. That is the subject of another program in the Our Finger Lakes History series. But in summary, in this program I have dealt with the Phelps and Gorham Purchase, the Boston Ten Townships Purchase, and the Watkins and Flint Purchase. Their story is another part of our Finger Lakes history.